The Princess and the Seven Bogatyrs. This story, also known in Russia as the Tale of the Dead Princess, was popularized by Alexander Pushkin in a narrative that closely parallels the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the fairy tale's Western European analog. Long, long ago, a loving couple, a czar and his wife, lived happily together. One day, the czar informed his queen that he must visit a faraway kingdom and that he would be gone for many, many days. She was pregnant and waited by her window for his return. She watched as the summer passed and turned into autumn, and still the czar did not come back. Finally, he rode into the palace on the very day she gave birth to a beautiful princess, the Tsarevna. Exhausted, the queen, with a loving smile and a deep sigh, passed away. The grieving Tsar, who so adored of his dead queen, faced a dilemma. As king, he was expected to remarry and to have a son to succeed him. Reluctantly, he chose a tall and graceful woman for his new Tsaritsa, and although she was a great beauty with snow-white skin and a rosy complexion, she was jealous of anyone whose looks might overshadow her own. In her dowry, the new Tsaritsa brought with her a magical mirror that could speak. Every day, she took up her mirror, looked into it, and asked, Light of my life, mirror mine, tell me truly, am I not the loveliest woman in the kingdom? Are not my cheeks the rosiest and my skin the whitest? Surely I am the most beautiful of all. And each time, their mirror replied, Of course, Tsaritsa, there is no one as beautiful as you, no one with cheeks so rosy, nor skin as white and fair as yours. Each time, the new queen laughed and danced with joy for being the fairest in all the land. Years passed, and the young Tsarevna, the princess born to the Tsar and his first beloved queen, grew to be a lovely young woman, with bright blue eyes and long silken hair. Her cheeks were rosy red and her skin the purest white. Many young men came to claim her hand, but the Tsar and his daughter favored only the gallant Prince Yelisi. On their wedding day, the Tsaritsa, whose beauty was now fading, dressed in her finest gown, and as she dressed, she took out her mirror and repeated her question. This time, the mirror replied as it never had before, saying, You are indeed beautiful, Tsaritsa. Of that there is no doubt, but there is another in the land whose beauty is greater than yours. Never has there been anyone whose eyes are brighter or bearing more regal. Hers is a beauty beyond description. The Tsaritsa went into a rage. She ordered that the Tsarevna be taken to the forest and tied to a tree so that wolves could feast upon her. But as the princess struggled to free herself, a babushka, an old grandmother, appeared and touched by the princess's pleading and understanding the danger she was in, untied her and set her free alone in the forest. The time for the wedding came and the Tsarevna was nowhere to be found. Prince Yalisi was overcome with grief. He mounted his horse and pledged that he would find her, even if it took the rest of his life. Meanwhile, the Tsarevna wandered aimlessly deep into the forest, until to her surprise she came upon a house in a small clearing. She cautiously entered the home, and finding no one there, she began to clean it. When she finished, she lit a candle in the beautiful icon corner and lay down to rest. In the evening, seven bogatirs, light knights in armor, tall and handsome young men, returned to their home, and finding it spotlessly clean, called out, demanding whoever had tidied up had better come out of hiding. The Tsarevna walked into the room. The seven bogatirs were overcome by her beauty. They quickly brought her food and wine, and when the princess begged them to let her sleep in their house, the bogatirs escorted her to an upstairs bedroom to rest. Each besotted bogatir asked her to choose him to become her husband, but the beautiful Tsarevna said that even though she loved them all for being kind to her, she was betrothed to Prince Yelisi. Back in the palace, the evil Tsarevna, while consulting her mirror, was told that in the forest, living with seven bogatirs, is one far more beautiful than you. On hearing this, the queen commanded the babushka to go into the house of the seven knights and kill the princess. 
When she found her at the house, the babushka gave the princess a golden apple. Unsuspectingly, she took a bite and fell lifeless to the floor. When the bogatirs returned home that evening, they found the princess, but not believing her to be dead, they carried her to a cave high in the mountains where they placed her in a crystal casket secured to six marble pillars by heavy gold chains. All the while, Prince Ulysses had been searching the kingdom for his betrothed. He asked the sun where she could be, but the red-hot sun had not seen her as he traveled the daytime sky, and the moon had not seen her in the night. But when the prince asked the wind if he had seen her, the wind replied, A few days ago, high in the mountains, I came upon a cave, and in that cave I found between six marble pillars a crystal casket rocking to a gentle breeze, and in that crystal casket sleeps your beautiful princess. The wind led Prince Ulysses to the mountain cave with the crystal casket inside. With one mighty blow, the prince broke it open. As he gathered his beloved Zarevna into his arms, she awoke. The evil queen, on learning from her magic mirror that Prince Ulysses had discovered the princess in the mountain cave, woken her from her deep sleep and rescued her, threw the magic mirror onto the floor, shattering it to pieces. In a fit of jealousy at the sight of the lovers as they returned to the Tsar's palace, the Tsaritsa fell dead. The Tsarevna married Prince Ulysses, and together they lived a life filled with joy and happiness.